so funny story. I was getting all set. Oh god. I was getting all set to record a video for you guys and I just got a box from Influencer. And I thought I would show you those products in action too. Yeah. One of them burns really badly. And the mascara is clearly not waterproof. So that's how that went. Oh lord. Fail. Let's rewind. I am doing some book reviews today, but before I get into them, I was going to show you this little influencer box that I got the other day, just for those of you that saw it on, you know, Instagram or Twitter and were curious. This was to promote the return of the Royal Blue Great Lash, which I've used before and really liked. So I put it on, was going to show you, and then they also sent this Onyx Black Unstoppable Eyeliner. It's supposed to be waterproof, so I was going to try it in my waterline and see how that worked out, but... It was an absolute dud. I couldn't get anything off on my waterline, and then my eyes started watering really bad. And I thought it was because of this, but then when I thought about it a little bit more, I already have this, and I remember the last time I wore it that one of my eyes was burning like crazy. And I just figured it was because it was an old tube, and so I threw it away, but no, I think it was actually this that did it. I love the big pigmentation on these. They're great. Every time I do like a costume makeup, I end up using these. I think I have them in every single color. But that said, if they're going to burn like I just put acid in my eye, I don't think I can use these anymore. So that's my thoughts on that. But let's get into the real point of the video. Before we get into the real meat of the video, though, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for any kitten sounds you hear. I'm in the spare room right now, which I'm using as a temporary kitten room slash grow room, which sounded really illicit. Here's my illicit crop of broccoli. But anyway, they're mobile now and they're kind of getting into things, so I'm sitting in here with them, but you're probably going to hear a lot of little meeping sounds. Like that. But anyway, the point, the actual point of this video is the other day on Twitter I asked what video I should film. These flyaways going to get on anyone's nerves because they're getting on mine. I did a little poll and for a good while there, a chat was winning, just any kind of chat. Um, which I was expecting to be the case. Those tend to be pretty requested. And then all of a sudden, like a dark horse out of nowhere, many reviews of my recent reads won. So I'm actually going to do a two-parter. Today I'm going to look at recent books that I've read, and then a few videos from now I'll take a look at recent comics that I've read. And I'm going to try to move through them pretty quickly because I'm recording this on Easter and I have probably about 20 minutes before I need to go start cooking. So let's get into it. And it's a really mixed bag, I gotta say. It's a, it's a weird one. I'm gonna start off with the one that I have the least to say, and I was gonna do a dedicated video just for this one because it was actually the last stack of five winner, but I figured I would just go ahead and throw it in with this. So the book is Spindle's End by Robin McKinley. I don't have the least to say because there's not a lot to say about it, but just I feel like any time I review a McKinley book, I tend to say the same things. So if you've ever read McKinley, if you're a fan of her, I think you'll like this. If you've had problems with her, or people like her in the past, skip this. She's known for somewhat being a little over-detailed and also going off on tangents a lot. So if you find it hard to follow when a character says something and then there's like a full-on paragraph of like, stuff, and then the answer comes and you're like, wait, I don't even remember what was said to begin with. She's probably not the author for you because she does that, I mean, probably literally every page. It's just constant tangents. It works for me, that's kind of how my brain works anyway, and I don't have a problem following most of the tangents. Um, as for the story itself, it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, and I thought a pretty solid one. Not Beauty and the Beast, I don't know why I said that. Sleeping Beauty, and I thought it was a pretty solid one. Um, her tales can be pretty traditional, and you know, they're not pushing the envelope too much, but that said, they're always typically very solid and have great worlds and great characters, and I did think this was a great world and great characters. I really did enjoy them, and the book itself. It took me a while to read it because it, she is kind of a slightly bogged down writer, but that said, I enjoyed it throughout. I mean, I never felt like, oh my god, I just want to get done with this book. I liked it. I felt immersed. I was in it. Thumbs up for me, but thumbs up with some pretty serious caveats. Kind of know who you are as a reader and what you like, because there's a good chance you might not like this, depending on the type of reader that you are. 
Up next we have The Bone Season, and I said on Goodreads this is probably one of the strangest books I've read in a good long while. Not because the plot is so strange. I have read Stranger Things, not the Netflix series. I have read Stranger Books than this, though this is very strange, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop saying strange now. All of the mechanics of this book, combined with the plot, make it a really weird read, and I'm left kind of not knowing whether I liked it or didn't. I mean, I was really enjoying it. I was reading it pretty quickly and was eager to get back into it. I was reading in the daytime, which I haven't done in a while. Um, I've weirdly developed like a nighttime reading habit, and I feel like that's the only time I can read now. I don't understand why, because one of my favorite things to do is to go out in sunshine and read, so I don't know what that's all about. But this kind of brought me back to that, and I was sitting outside reading, or I was laying in bed reading, and it was, you know, it was keeping me hooked, but all the while I was kind of like just shaking my head at it. It is the info dumpiest thing that I've read in a while. I mean, just solid info dumping in the beginning. It also, in the beginning especially, has a tendency to be more tell than show, and that's a pet peeve of mine. So those are to two things that normally would just completely turn me off of a book, but I kept going. The other thing that would normally really irritate me is it is seriously cheesy. I mean, I was really into it, and then all of a sudden, like, the meat of the story, the big twist in the beginning twist, is revealed, and I was like, really? Like, I was almost ready to put it down. I was thinking, this is, this was already cheesy enough, and it just went, like, ten times cheesier, and I don't know if I can do this. I powered through, it stayed cheesy, it got cheesier, and in the end, it started to really fall apart. That said, I felt the potential, and I was curious enough about it that I would even consider continuing the series, but there are some serious style flaws for me, and beyond just pet peeves, but actual flaws, like things that I'm kind of surprised that this was published as is from a mainstream publisher, and that it was as hyped as it is. I mean, it does have, it needs some work. It feels very young and a little underdeveloped, and there was a lack of clarity, sometimes I think intentionally. I think she tries to make a slightly confusing and different world, which is a real risk to take, especially as, you know, a young author, but even beyond that I think that it could have used some tightening in the editing process, and it could have definitely used some clarity and consistency and a whole lot less cheesiness. The language of it, and the world building of it, I think, will draw some people in, but others will find it utterly obnoxious. It's a little, it really straddles that line of being over the top and confusing, even. I like to be plunged into a book, but there is, like, a point where you've gone beyond just being plunged in and learning as you go to being a little lost, and I think some people will be a little lost with this. So in the end, I just end up in this weird spot where I'm like, I enjoyed it, and I am really surprised that I enjoyed it. I don't know why I did, I don't know if it was the right book at the right time, but at the wrong time I think I would have been really irritated with this. It feels like an overindulged author who's been allowed to get away with things because they bring in the bucks, you know? Someone that's been in the game for a long time, and so they're allowed to do what they want and end up failing a little bit for it because you need those outside editorial points of view to help you tighten it, because you're too in your head, and that's what it felt like. It felt too in Samantha Shannon's head. I don't know what else to say about it. It was strange, it had some huge, huge flaws, and I still enjoyed it, and I don't know why. Do with that what you will. And that's kind of the theme of this whole segment of reviews, because I also read Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova, which I have talked about a little bit and talked about how much I was loving it, and I did. I really, really enjoyed it. At the same time, there were some huge pet peevish things and things that I think should have been tightened up editorially that I think, if I were in a different mood, really would have bothered me, and for whatever reason they didn't at this point, but normally they would have, and I think they bear pointing out. Before I point them out, though, this little mama apparently wants to say hi, because she keeps climbing under the camera and meowing. I know, darling. Your babies are walking, and it's very, very frustrating. I know it. I know it. Anyway, this was 
enjoyable for me, beginning to end. I was really in it. I was happy with the world building and mostly happy with the characters. But it has two huge things that were kind of holding me back from loving it as much as I wanted to. Number one, I think it requires a huge, possibly too huge, willing suspension of disbelief. Not in the world, not in the sort of bruja lifestyle here on this world, or in the other world that they go to, Los Lagos. I think that was built out fine. I don't think that required it any more of a suspension of disbelief than a typical fantasy. But in the way the world is introduced to you, namely through the character of Nova, who seems to know everything about everything, that, that was a little too much for me. It is eventually explained. There's kind of a lame explanation for, for it early on that you don't really trust. You know you can't trust him, and so you kind of go with it. But I guess the presentation of it, it's not so much that he seems to know everything, but that she doesn't seem to question it more. Uh, what's the main character's name? Alex. Alex really should have questioned things more, and it bothered me that she didn't, because it made it a lot less believable. Because as the reader, you're questioning, and you're saying, wait, who is this kid, where did he come from, and why does he know all of this? That ties into my second big pet peeve, which was overuse of deus ex machina. If you're not sure what that is, it's kind of like every time a character is in some problem, they, how are they going to get out of it? It seems too big for them to handle. Something comes along and saves the day. Whether it's a different character comes along, or they suddenly remember the key to something, or literal gods come down from the clouds and fix things, that's deus ex machina. And it's just not a great idea, except for in very limited circumstances. I understand why it was used in this, because it's part of the whole family theme of the book, and I even like that, but it just felt too reliant on that, to the point that I stopped worrying about any potential danger or tension, because nothing's gonna come of it. Nothing's gonna come of it. If it had felt like a little more of a struggle, for the ancestors to come through, or for her to understand what they're trying to get her to do, or just, you know, something to make it a little more work, and a little more down to the wire and tense, it would have worked more for me. But as is, it's something that normally would really stand out and bother me, and I think will bother some readers. Now, all, all of that said, those two big things aside, I still really enjoyed it, and I'm really actually looking forward to the second book. I think it was really fun, I loved the world, I love the characters and the family that she's built, and I'm excited to see where it goes. But depending on the type of reader you are, those two things, and maybe some other smaller things, definitely bear keeping in mind, because they might ruin the book a bit for you. But I liked it, it was really enjoyable. And lastly, and yet another one that I'm very mixed on, and that is The Last Harvest by Kim Liggett. Now I don't remember when and where I talked about her debut, Blood and Salt, but basically everything I said about that, I feel like I'm going to say about this. It's the same strengths, it's the same flaws. Kim builds these worlds, these sort of horror worlds and cultish worlds that I really like, that feel very strong, eerie, and creepy, and they're maybe a little overly referential of things like Children of the Corn and, you know, things that have come before. You can really see themes and stories mirrored quite heavily in these. It doesn't necessarily bother me. You know, you can say that she's bringing those stories to a new audience, a younger generation, um, but also they're kind of repeated themes in most cultish horror type stuff anyway, so that's not a huge deal breaker or anything to me. That said, she does such a great job of building the tension and the creep factor, and then just kind of kills it at the end. It always just tips over the line into cheesy. Like, you're so close, Kim. You're so close to knocking it out of the park, and then it just dissolves into, like, schlockiness and blah. All of the tension and the atmosphere that she creates is just wasted because it's not enough. Tension and atmosphere is not enough. You've got to carry it through more interestingly than just a cheesy, how can I twist this? Sort of M. Night Shyamalan, what's the most extreme twist that I can do? It just, it weakens it, you know? It's so strong and then it just kind of falls apart. That said, really quick, 
creepy. I think most people will like this and maybe won't have the pet peeves that I do. And maybe if you're going into something that's kind of horror, you're prepared for some amount of cheese because that goes hand in hand a lot of times. I mean, I guess it just depends on reader expectations, but for me, they don't finish nearly as strong as they start, and that just disappoints me. So there we have it. Those are the books. I liked them all, and have major reservations on them all, so it's it's a weird one. It often is. If you have read any of these, let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you agree or disagree. I'm definitely curious what you think of all of them, because as I said, I ended up on the fence quite a bit throughout the stack. But that is all for this mini review. Thank you to all of you who weighed in on Twitter and let me know what you wanted to see. I will try to get to the rest of the things I mentioned, like a chat and whatever the other things were, I'm really not sure. And as I mentioned, I will have another mini reviews video coming on comics and graphic novels, and there are some really good ones in there, and also a couple major flops, so that should be interesting. That is all for now. I'm gonna go start cooking my Easter dinner, because I'm looking forward to some turkey. You have no idea. I'm gonna play with some kittens. This morning I had a kitten photo shoot, because that's what normal people do on Easter Sunday. <laughs> but that is all for now. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, happy reading! I don't know how well you guys can see, but I've had a buddy pretty much this whole time I've been filming. She's just been staring up at me, watching me record. Oh, it's so cute! Yeah, high five! Oh, high five! Yeah! What are you doing? Oh, you're cute!